So when I decided to join up, I decided I wanted to join the Air Force. And, so and what would to, you think of the Air Force? I'm sorry? And what would you think of the Air Force? I don't know. I just liked the Air Force. Okay. That's all. I wanted to be in the air crew. Okay. So I didn't have enough education to be a pilot, so I went for an air gunner. I'm glad I didn't get it, because this back came back anyway. <laughs> so anyway, then they, I went up to the uh, Prince Edward Hotel, and I passed all the examination medical, and they said, well, we'll notify you when we can, when they come, when they can accept you because they, had, they didn't have the facilities to train us in those days. So I says, okay, yet there's an Americans were there and they were taken right away. We didn't want to lose them. So a couple of weeks later, this young friend of mine who joined up in the Scottish and he got, because he was only 16, they let him out. So one day he says to me, he says, I'm going to join the Air Force. I says, why the heck didn't you tell him? I says, you could have joined up together. I says, there's a waiting list. So what do you mean? I told him that. I said, oh, well, we're going to be smart. Let's go to Toronto. They'll take us right away. They take the Americans over here because they didn't want to lose them. Then we quit our jobs, we went to Toronto, and passed all the tests. Call you when we need you. I says, We're broke. I says, We come from Windsor. I says, You better. What are we going to do? He says, Well, it's not, that's beyond our power. He says, Do what you want. But he said, We'll call you when we need you. So we'll probably have to join the Army. He says, Go ahead. I think it's a couple hours later, we already had a uniform on. <laughs> so I left. <laughs> We left to go to Toronto and if they come back in blue, we come back in khaki. <laughs> what we done, they had, uh, when I, what I went over was I was in the transport department, I mean, and uh, so, and I was riding a motorbike at, from when I landed there, so naturally your motorbike doesn't land with you. Can't land that in water, so. So they, I was trained for clear mind, so they gave me a probe, and he says, well, when you get off the boat and you probe, and the guys will follow you. And I says, oh, yeah, okay. And well, I started probing. These guys were going like the dickers. They weren't waiting, so I didn't probe. I left the probe and I took off. Too. <laughs> I was going to be there by myself. <laughs> so that was that. So I think we didn't get our equipment. So, well, some of it came in later in the day, but I think it was a couple of days before we got our motorbikes in. And then you'd run messages back and forth. And so the site where you landed, was it kind of a rural area? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Sicily, well, unless you landed in the big, in the big city, see? Yes. Yeah. So it was just a, kind of like an isolated beach or yeah. someplace? Well, the whole thing. Yeah. Like I said so many years ago, I don't, I, <laughs> when you're excited, you don't realize what it is. But I know it wasn't in the middle of a town or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you see many uh, uh, civilians? Uh, oh, yeah. Civilians? yeah. Like I was telling uh, Gervais the other day, when he interviewed me, I'm not sure if this was in Sicily or in Italy, mm -hmm. this fella just comes up to me and he says, Hi, Canada. I says, hi. And he spoke in broken English. He says, I used to live in Canada. He says, I says, well, what are you doing here? Well, he says, I came to visit my family. And he says, the war started. And he said, I was not a Canadian citizen. I couldn't get back out of the country. So I says, well, where did you live? And he said, I lived in Windsor. And I says, oh. I said, what did you do in Windsor? I said, I said, I don't know. Maybe I better question this guy. I don't know if he was a spy or anything. Cause he says, I said, well, he said, I used to work at Ford's. I said, oh, at Fort in Windsor? He says, yeah. So I said, where did you live? He says, I had a room on Albert Road. I said, oh. So I knew then he knows what about he's from Windsor. So he says, how come you're asking me all these questions? I says, I'm from Windsor. One block from me. Wow. What a coincidence. No, and you say it's a small world? Yes. <laughs> so I says, where did you live? And he I says, I live on Albert Road. I says, yeah, but who did you live with? Because in those days, if you had an extra bedroom, you rented your bedroom, just a room, room and bath, like you say. And you done your own laundry, or when you had your laundry on, you ate out. So all you did was a room. So anyway, he lived with this third lady, and I knew the lady. So I said, oh, I said, I know her. And he says, I write letters in broken Italian, broken English. He said, I write a lot of letters, but I don't get no answer. Well, I don't think the letters did. So the mail got through anyway in those days. So he says, when you go back, he says, you tell this lady. And I'm coming back as soon as I, they let me out of this country. So I stayed over there for next year after the war and occupation. I was I volunteered to stay over. So when I did come home, the lady passed away. I, I was I told my mother about it. She said, "Oh, she passed away about three years. She passed away shortly." While we were in Italy, she passed away anyway. But it's just a coincidence how small the world is. Mm -hmm. Of all the guys he picked, it was me and a block away. <laughs> A couple of days before Rome fell, we were out. We were after casino. We were pushing that side. Yeah, tell me about we, that. How exciting was that? We thought we were going to take Rome, mm -hmm. 
And all of a sudden we got called back. The Americans wanted the honor and they were, they, they had more people than we did, I guess. So they pulled us back and they took Rome. So the next day, the day after Rome fell, I wasn't sure what day, I thought it was three, four days after, but I found out the sense it was different. Um, uh, the fellow was a corporal and he was in transportation. He says, how would you like to go to Rome? I said, I'd love to go. He says, get your bike and let's go. We were in what we call a rest period then, you know. I says, you joking? Yeah. I said, okay. So he went to Rome. He jumped on the back of the bike. We left early in the morning. Don't ask me how we found it. We found St. Peter's Cathedral. We don't speak Italian. And Rome's a big city. I guess you can see the cathedral for miles. Or so that's how only way we found it, I guess. So we went right up to the top, had our picture taken. And uh, on the way back, we got a flat tire, and the Americans, the top the American dealer, served in one of these garages, not garages, but well, the uh, mechanical depot, they called them. We stopped there and they fixed our tire for us. We got back into camp in the middle of the night, and they never even missed us. <laughs> we weren't that important, I guess. <laughs>